So I'm about to do a demo at the VMware user group in Minneapolis, Minnesota tomorrow. And actually I'm boarding a flight in about two hours, but before I shut this compact little system down, and all the parts listed are right there, I figure why not give you a tour of what VMware actually looks like running on the machine. So this is super micro IPMI, it's called. Uh, you don't need a VGA cable or keyboard or mouse, you just point your browser to the management interface, the fifth Ethernet interface on the server. And there you got your two one gig and two ten gig interfaces. So I'm not focused on that today. Let's move on. VMware. Let's work our way left to right, actually. So the next icon I've got going here. Ah, power use. So we're burning 53 watts at idle right now for the server itself. Router, seven and a half, and an Asus switch that has uh, two ten gig and eight one gig ports, eleven. All right, done showing you that. That's uh, Ubiquiti's M Power Pro power strip. Next, vSphere client, the very latest version. It still lets you log in, the 6.5 client, sorry, the 6.0 client, the latest build. It does let you log into an ESXi host, but not to a vCSA server, a vCenter server that's 6.5 based. So uh, yeah, it lives on, but you're getting more and more annoyed using it because there's less and less you can do with modern VMs. So I'm gonna minimize that. <clears throat> okay, going left to right, here's Vami. This is what happens when you go to VCSA, colon 5480. You can see the health of your database and so forth in your new uh, Photon OS based appliance. Okay, and what do we have here? We have a little error. This is the ESXi host client. It's baked right into ESXi 6.5 hypervisor. You don't need to install it separately anymore, which is kind of awesome. All right, uh, here's what it looks like. If you haven't seen that already, and here's what the server hardware looks like. So now we're looking at, you know, build version of ESXi itself. This is a fresh build right there. If you had an updated build, you'd actually see your old version. Uh, what else to show you? Well, CPU, you can see how many cores, eight, and hyper-threading's on, so 16 total. Cool. So that's the host client managing one server. Works great. Built right in at ESXi. And uh, it's got a nice graph too. I like the performance graph and the snappiness is pretty awesome. Uh, this is a modest four-year-old ThinkPad Yoga 13. I'm remotely controlling here to record this video. And you know, things are snappy. It's quite a delight to work on it, including doing things like controlling a VM. There's your Photon OS. Uh, not a whole lot to see with that choice I just made. All right, moving along, ready to minimize that one. What do we got here? vSphere Web Client. This is uh, not the most beloved product because it's Adobe Flash based. So it still requires Adobe Flash. Uh, yuck. But let's go here and look at the server view. Summary tab. There you go. We can see Super Micro Super Server ZND 1541 right there. And similar details to what you saw with the web UI, only Adobe flash based. You still need to use this for emotion, and that's what I'm about to show you. Quick peek over here would be vSphere client. Slickest view of all, the way of the future, really fast, so I'm liking that. Uh, what's not to like about fast, but you can't be motion with it yet. So we're not going to do me much good here when I show off some uh, storage speeds. So let's head right over to vSphere client and kind of stay there for the balance of this short video. I have a template. Let's see where this template lives. This template lives on what hard disk virtual drive? NVMe uh, 950 Pro. Let me go ahead and move that. Actually, let's see. I'm going to convert it to virtual machine first. And I'm going to move it over to a different NVMe SSD, a Samsung SM951, which isn't quite as fast, but it's still pretty good. So migrate. This is a storage vMotion you're seeing. I'm going to move it to the Samsung SM951 right here, leaving it thin provisioned. And it's not going to take very long. Now, I think I found a bug here. Even if I had there, execution time was on. Uh, if you turn on execution time, it no longer seems to show you or calculate the difference between the start and the stop time. 
in other words, it's not showing the execution time. So I think that's a 6.5 bug I've noticed. Uh, okay, we're going to wait for that to finish. Like I said, the write speed of the SM951 is not as amazing. The other direction will be extra fun. That will really test out uh, the full read speed of the SM951 and then the amazing write speed. So a Samsung 950 Pro right here weighs in around 2,500 megabytes per second reads, 1,500 megabytes per second writes. So we're about to witness that. So it did complete, it didn't show us execution time. But we now have, a, uh, we can mark it as template again. So we now have a template that's living on a M.2 NVMe drive that is pretty darn fast. You can see it right there. So now here's the next test. Let's say a uh, new VM from this template. Let's go through that wizard, which should be a common thing. Okay, that should be pretty clear what I'm about to do. Got to highlight the host. I have only one host in this cluster. There's the 950 Pro. Next. And now we can watch how long it takes, which is going to be uh, not very. So here's our start time, 40 seconds after 3.06 p.m. 40% done. That's how the UI is. It doesn't really show you accurate progress, but notice it already jumped to 66. It is not going to take very long. Wow, that was actually a new record for me, 15 seconds. So when you can deploy a full copy of Windows in 15 seconds, it is pretty exciting. You're seeing it boot up, and of course the speed will be good. Now this is the first boot after a clone operation, so slightly slower, but I do have netplwiz.exe running so that it just automatically logs in. And now naturally, a good place to end this video would be running a disk benchmark now that the system has finished booting. Okay, I'll be right back after that's done running to show you, there it is, two windows now. Uh, this ATTO disk bench sh simply showing you the disk speed we're getting. So yes, we're getting full performance out of the Samsung 950 Pro, uh, the speeds you would expect when running under VMware, which has uh, no need for any kind of third-party drivers. It's had NVMe drivers available since the 5.5 days. So that's it for this video. You just got a quick glimpse at a little bit of what it's like when I do virtualization demos on the ZND platform at various user groups. Hopefully you enjoy this video. Thanks for watching and thanks for visiting tinkertry.com.